Hello and welcome back to today's video. So we're going to be having a quick look at the triple integral here of 2x plus 3y plus z across b. So before we do dive right into this problem, I did just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has been commenting lately, uh, giving me different tips and suggestions on ways to tackle some of the other problems that I've been going through. It's fantastic to see all the different methods that people have for solving particular problems. That is honestly one of my favorite things to see is when I see a new comment notification and there's some lovely new method. I'm like, oh, fantastic. I'm learning something new today. And so I really do appreciate it. So as always, if you do like today's video, please leave a like, subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and leave a comment if you do have any other interesting little facts or other methods that you would tackle this problem with for today. So let's dive right in. So it's a pretty straightforward problem. We're not going to be doing any change of coordinate systems or any change of variables or anything like that for today. Now this is more so just a problem for probably the students who are maybe finishing up in high school or starting university who have seen singular integrals and they know how to do those but they might not have seen double or triple integrals. So with that being said, let's get started. All right, so we have the triple integral here over some box B. Well, what does that mean now? If I've got that B down here, I've said that B is defined by, now we've got three separate regions here from zero to two, minus one to one, and zero to one. And what this represents, this kind of goes hand in hand with our dx, dy, and dz. Now it is typically the convention for us to be defining this across the x, the y, and the z. So what that means we can do now is instead of writing it as the triple integral over b, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to say, well, which comes first over here? We've got dx first, and dx is going to correspond to that domain here from 0 to 2. So that's going to be our limits of integration there. So 0 to 2. And then for our next one, we'll have minus 1 to 1. Then for our last one over here, 0 to 1. Okay, and again, what that's going to correspond to is our dx, dy, and dz. So we'll see a bit more of that in a moment. Okay, so again, let's just quickly fill this out. So 2x plus 3y plus z. And now we've got that dx, dy, dz. So dx, well, we know how to integrate a problem if it just says dx. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take it from the inside out. So let's imagine we just have this problem here. So the integral from 0 to 2 of 2x plus 3y plus z with respect to x. So, well, we hopefully know how to solve these problems. So, we'll quickly write that outside part now. So, integral 0 to 1 and minus 1 to 1. Now, let's quickly integrate this middle section here. So, from 0 to 2 of 2x. Well, with respect to x, we know that will now become x squared. So, we'll quickly fill that in. So, x squared plus 3yx plus zx, or xz I might write. Okay, and that's going to be from 0 to 2, as those are our limits of integration here. And we know that on the outside, we've got that dy dz. Okay, so real quick, we know that we just need to start substituting these values in and evaluating, well, what will that become? So again, writing out those other integration limits as such. And let's see what we'll be left with. Well, x squared, that will now become a 2 squared, so I'll become a 4. 3yx, well, that'll just become a plus 6y, and then plus xz, well, that's just going to become a plus 2z. Okay, and then when we would say minus the zeros, well, we see that all of these terms would simply just become zero. Okay, so that is our dx out of the way. So now we've got dy on the inside here. So as you might imagine, oops, what we'll do is we're going to go through and think about separating out that middle section and just evaluating that like we normally would. Okay, so now let's start thinking about this. Well, again, we would have our integral on the outside, so from 0 to 1. Now let's quickly integrate this with respect to y. So we know that that's now going to become a 4y, and then plus 6y, that will become a plus 3y squared, and then that plus 2z, well, that's just going to become a plus 2yz. Okay, and this is now being integrated from minus 1 to 1, and we'll chuck that dz on the outside there. Okay, so now let's just quickly evaluate this integral and we'll see what we get. So again, really quickly, 
and this is probably the worst part of doing these problems in so many steps, is just making sure you continually are writing down that integrand on the outside there. So the integral for y from minus one to one. All right, let's start seeing what we'll have. So chuck a y in there, we'll start with a four, then we'll have a plus three, and then a plus two z. And then we know that we'd be subtracting all of these terms, but then we'll be having a minus minus one. So we know we'd end up with a plus four. But then we'd have minus three times minus one squared, which will still get us a minus three. Uh, and then we'll lastly have a minus minus two z. So that just becomes a plus two z. And then on the end here, dz. Okay, fantastic. And so now we're up to our last step here. So just to quickly go through, integrate this with respect to z, and that's all there is. So first things first though, we can probably collect some like terms. So let's see, we notice that plus three will cancel out with that minus three over there. And we're left with a four plus four plus two z plus two z. So we'll have the integral from zero to one of, well, simply eight plus four z with respect to z. And so let's see what we have now. So integrating that, we can bring that over here and we'll say that that's simply gonna be eight z plus, well, four z becomes now two z squared and that's being evaluated across zero to one. So we'll then end up with our final answer of eight plus two equals 10 and then minus zero, zero. And that is our final answer for today. So right back at the start, we see that our final answer actually will just end up simply being a 10. And that's all this answer will be evaluated to. And that's it. So one thing I would suggest that if you have enjoyed this video, I would highly recommend that you go and look up Fubini's theorem. So I'll write that out right now. So Fubini's theorem. And I think you'll really enjoy it if you go through, read the Wikipedia article. I'm sure there are some good videos about it as well on YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll make one in the future, um, but I 10 out of 10 recommend having a quick look up uh, what Fubini's theorem describes, and that will show you some other different ways uh, and a couple of different orders that we could have evaluated this problem in. And although today's video hasn't been anything too crazy, I do hope that you have enjoyed. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please consider subscribing. Uh, and if you do have any of the methods or tips that you'd like to leave down in the comments, it would be appreciated. And as always, if you do have any other problems that you'd like to see me go through, then by all means, please leave a comment. And as always, stay curious. I'll see you next time.